Tech Up. I'm your host, Sarah Ingram, and this week we're bringing you science and technology news brought to us by our friends at Satura. This week includes news on scallop-inspired tiny robots, cutting phobias right out of your brain, computers that think like humans, picking up on the brain waves of comatose patients, and technology that could clone some animals right off the endangered species list. Researchers in Germany have developed a scallop-inspired robot that is capable of traveling through your bloodstream without the use of batteries or an engine. Researchers have created a super tiny robot that can be moved via an external magnetic power source. The robot moves around by opening and closing a pair of shells and performing what looks like horizontal jumping jacks. These little buddies can be printed on a 3D printer and many of them could be directed at once with a single magnet. The team doesn't have any particular use for this item yet, but it is clear that it would be great for directing medicine to a particular spot in the body. And they are kind of adorable. A man who had part of his left amygdala removed to treat seizures has also been cured of his fear of spiders overnight, paving the way for a new form of fear removal techniques. Thanks to this breakthrough discovery, scientists are now working on less invasive ways to weaken or remove phobias by using blood pressure pills or stimulating certain areas of the brain. Scientists at the Brighton and Sussex Medical School in the UK say they are looking into ways to test the theory that having certain parts of the brain removed can cure phobias while simultaneously leaving the normal fear responses intact. I look forward to a time when I can finally cure my fears of needles, spiders, open water, heights, clowns. Google X has announced a new nanoparticle platform project which will use recognition molecules to detect cancer, plaque, or too much sodium in the bloodstream. This new nanoparticles project was announced by the Google X Life Sciences team. The project seeks to develop medical diagnostic technology that uses nanoparticles with magnetic cores to detect ailments in the bloodstream. To form a baseline and understand the data that the sensors are collecting, the Google X Life Sciences Group has been developing related technology for wearable devices that monitor heart rates, heart rhythms, and oxygen levels. The chip was originally intended to help diabetes patients keep their blood sugars under control, but it definitely has a lot more cool applications in store. Speaking of Google, the Google-owned company DeepMind Technologies is developing the Neural Turing Machine, a hybrid computer that will actually program itself. The Neural Networks technology will enable the computer to invent programs for situations it has not seen before by combining the way ordinary computers work with the way the human brain learns. Experts hope this will equip the machine with the means to create like a human, but still have the number crunching power of a normal computer. A computer using this technology learns faster and produces longer blocks of data with fewer errors than any other system to date. Computers that think like humans, nanochips in your bloodstream, I think Google is one toxic spill away from evil geniuses. Scientists in Cambridge have found brain signatures in the brains of people thought to be in a vegetative state. Scientists at the University of Cambridge and the MRC Cognition and Brain Sciences Unit have used high-density EEGs and graph theory to study networks of activity in the brains of comatose patients. There has been a great deal of interest recently in how much patients in a vegetative state following severe brain injury are aware of their surroundings. The researchers showed that the rich and diversely connected networks that support awareness in the healthy brain are typically, but importantly not always, impaired in patients in a vegetative state. Some vegetative patients have well-preserved brain networks that look very similar to healthy patients, even though they were thought to be unresponsive. These patients were those who had shown signs of hidden awareness by following commands such as imagining playing tennis. These findings could help researchers develop a relatively simple way of identifying which patients might be aware while in a vegetative state. A revolutionary treatment has allowed a man to walk again by having nerve cells from his nose transplanted into his severed spinal column. In a breakthrough hailed by one of the scientists responsible as more impressive than a man walking on the moon, a patient can walk again with the help of a support frame after nerve cells from his nose were replanted into his spine. The damaged fibers located in the spinal column reconnected after olfactory and sheathing cells were implanted above and below the injury, cells involved in our sense of smell. It's amazing to think that the regeneration of the spinal column, something thought impossible for many years, might actually soon be a reality. 
For a measly $100,000, you can buy an ancient Chinese puppy breed at China's first animal cloning facility, Suam. Partnered with Boyolife, the company wants to specialize in cloning the precious Tibetan Mastiff, a breed of ancient guard dogs that holds incredible value in China and are selling for literally millions of dollars. Scientists from both companies will operate China's first commercial animal cloning facility on grounds landscaped to look like a park and are looking into cloning endangered pandas as well. Beyond that, they envision a renowned research facility to explore the various biomedical applications of cloning and stem cells, another area of focus for Suam and Boyolife. Personally, I'd be interested in cloning a velociraptor, although I don't think my apartment building will allow that type of pet. Just, just too bad. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's an ambulance drone might soon be a new catchphrase thanks to an invention by a Dutch graduate student. Painted in emergency service colors and carrying a four kilogram defibrillator, the drone is designed to track mobile calls made to the emergency number and zero in on the same using standard GPS protocols. Though designed to carry a defibrillator, the concept of using a drone to dispatch emergency medical supplies and equipment to hard to reach places can certainly mean the difference between life and death. The student wants his drone to become a flying medical toolbox able to carry an oxygen mask to a person trapped in a fire or an insulin injection to a diabetes sufferer. This is the first time these self-maneuvering machines will be used to tend to medical emergencies, now typically used for aerial photography, package delivery, and goofing off in the backyard with your buddies. Thanks again to the folks at Satura for supplying us with this month's biggest news bits. Make sure you check out Satura online to keep up to date with the biggest science and technology news as it happens. Technology and science news, courtesy of our friends at Satura. Tell me what is so wrong. Tell me what you've been waiting on. I've been catching you singing along with every word I sing. Well, are you waiting?